All right, so we're about to get into it. Um, I may set it up today, but more than likely it'll be tomorrow where we can go ahead and start having conversations about the things that you need to do to be successful. This is not a sales call. This will be conversations between you and I about what you need to do, where you are, and the things you need to do to set up an online business. So look for that right now. There's a link below and you can go to the questionnaires. Questions take you a minute to fill out, but I haven't hooked up the scheduling system yet. I may hook that up today, but that link's below. All right, so let's get into this video. Interesting day, very interesting day, really interesting day. Uh, I had to drop off my car for an oil change and one of the things they do that I find to be really nice is they will call a Lyft or an Uber for you. So I dropped the car off and they called a Lyft and it was a Jeep, really nice Jeep. And I was like, oh, okay. It's really interesting because I've never been in a Lyft or Uber in a Jeep. So the guy comes in and I noticed something about this guy. He's somewhat professional. He's not like your normal Uber or Lyft driver. I just had this feeling because the Jeep was really nice and you know we were just talking, we were talking about football and stuff. And one of the things I like to do is to talk to the Uber or Lyft drivers just to see where they are. And then I asked him, I was like, you know, do you do this full time? And he said, no. He said, I just do it here and there. I said, oh, okay, what do you do full time? And this is when he floored me. He said, I own not one, not two, but three semi trucks. I was like, you own three semi trucks? He said, yeah. And we started to talk and I was like, I got a question because one of the things I saw online that a lot of people were pushing this go ahead and get a semi truck and this passive income and all this other stuff and he just started laughing he's like let me break it down for you he said the best year for trucking was 2020 and then a lot of people got into trucking and there became too many truckers and everything and the guy was yawn and he said i didn't sleep well last night because you know with owning this trucking company these drivers are always calling me at these weird times because as you know a lot of the over the road drivers do a lot of their driving at night so i want you to think the owner of three semi trucks driving a lift here and there and we know why he's driving the lift it's about the money he needs the money so this is the real segment of the economy. This is one of the things that is going on with the economy. And like I said, very nice guy, really intelligent, somewhat, you know, very professional. And this is just lets you know what's going on with the economy, where the owner of three semi trucks is driving a lift part time because you know we were talking he said i couldn't do it full time and then this is where the conversation got he's like he said i wouldn't do it full time in this jeep which i could see he said if i had like a little honda or something like this which lets me know that he's thought about driving these cars full time and once again i can see how that can work because he could still dispatch and manage the trucks from the car. I can see that, but he's thought about that. And that just tells you that trucking has really, really slowed down. Trucking has really, really slowed down. And this is just another reality of the economy because once again, it really depends on where you're positioned. Like, when I was thinking about starting that moving company, which I am really glad, I'll, I'll tell you what happened with that guy who actually, I hired someone who actually has a moving guy and I, I hired him, I paid him per hour to give me wisdom and insights on a moving company. But one of the things that I see, and it, it was interesting because I was on the highway today and when I was going to drop my car off, I was looking for new car tags. And it was, you know, I, I, I didn't see any new car tags. I didn't see one all day. So 
we're getting into the point where the economy is really starting to slow down. It's really starting to slow down. And this is one of the things like, uh, I did my thorough due diligence on the moving company because I was like, hmm. And the guy that I talked to, he's already sold one of his moving trucks because it slowed down that much. And then when I was moving, it was very easy to find a mover. I mean, the first mover I called, boom, there was no, and they were able to move me rather quickly. So one of the things that I am learning is you gotta do your due diligence. You've got to really position yourself to actually um, make yourself whole in this economy because one of the things that I am seeing is a lot of these businesses like um, Airbnb, Turo, there are some folks who are doing well, but a lot of folks are getting out of the business because the money isn't the same as that pandemic stimulus money. It's just not the same. So one of the things that was happening in the economy is we're going from the fake pandemic economy, and I'll explain what I mean by fake pandemic economy. Well, let, let's talk about that. The fake pandemic economy, $6 trillion, all types of loan. The government pushed so much money into the system, pushed so much money into the system that it created an alternate universe of the system. It wasn't the real system. It wasn't the real system at all. So we had this alternate reality of the US economy that was existing on pandemic money. And a lot of people got that pandemic money. Then the pandemic money went away. And here's the real economy. The real economy has got people out here doing stuff. And one of the things that I see is a new reality because, you know, kudos to this guy for, you know, doing what he needs to do to make sure he's okay. Um, one of the things that I see, because uh, we, we actually had a really good conversation I was talking about, there's a guy here on YouTube, not your average trucker, and I was talking about this guy, I think he did it smart. He bought a lot of used trucks, but he paid cash. And uh, we didn't get into his finances and stuff, but the fact that this owner of three semi trucks was driving a lift should tell you a lot about his personal economy and what's going on with the reality that's happening in the world today. And this is kind of one of the reasons that I'm getting ready to do some hands-on training to help people get to that next level because we're in, I don't think we're gonna have the foreclosure levels that we had during the last, the Great Recession, but foreclosures have literally tripled in the last 12 months, foreclosures. So we, we got that, and I cannot even tell you what's going on with cars, um, with the repossessions that are going on. We're just seeing the real economy. We're seeing issues with the real economy, and we're seeing a lot of things that are happening with the real economy. There's things that are crazy that are happening with the real economy. So, and that's why I keep saying, the real economy. Right now, we're living in the real economy. We have real things going on in the real economy. And, you know, I was checking houses. Houses are still popping off just like that. Just like that. Um, people, I saw this $2 million house that came on the market about three weeks ago, and it, it's closed. The house sold in three weeks, $2 million house. So we're, we're seeing certain movements in the economy. We're seeing certain things happen in the economy. And it really depends on where you are positioned in the economy. Because one of the things that uh, I've been doing and looking at is setting up something very, very different 
and it's going to take me putting my hands into it, so to speak, for me to work this thing out. Um, one of the things that you should be aware of, and this is very, very important, is you need to have options in this economy. You need to have options. And what do I mean by options? You need to have really good credit. You need to have money in the bank and you need to have multiple job skills. And that's where we're about to get into it. Because if you have the right job skills, doesn't matter if we have a recession, it doesn't matter at all if you have the right job skills. And this is one of the things, I get hit up every day by people in India and Palestine talking about they want to run shorts for my YouTube channel. Now this is something I found to be really interesting. There's a guy who does, he talks about YouTube, creating money with YouTube channels and stuff. And on his main YouTube channel, he doesn't do shorts, but he's announced in his videos that he does have a shorts channel. And I will tell you, you know, there's a lot of people who saying you should integrate shorts with your long form content. And I've seen a number of people who've left TikTok and come to YouTube and it didn't work out. I personally think, and this is just my personal belief, that people who love shorts is a different audience from an audience that will watch your long form content. And I know that everyone is saying you should do shorts, you should get into vertical content to draw more attention to yourself. And I cannot tell you how many YouTube comments I've written I read by people who were trying to integrate shorts with their long form, con long form content, and it just simply wasn't working. So, you know, will shorts work? Yes, shorts work. Uh, there's a girl by the name of Vivacious Honey, and she started off with shorts. The girl's really smart, very creative. She puts out some very interesting videos, so I can see why her shorts are taking off. She's almost got two million subscribers, but whenever she puts up a long form video, it just doesn't do as well as her shorts. Doesn't even do close. So with the right content, you got to have the right setup. And this is one of the things that I am looking at. And this is one of the things that I am doing for myself is I rearrange my content. And it's gonna take some time, but I can already see that things are a little different here and there. They're really, really different. But right now in this economy, you got to have the right skill sets. Hands down, you got to have the right skill sets. Um, that's a very important thing for you to have as we go forward in this economy because 2024, I will be highly surprised if we do not have a recession in 2024. I would be really highly surprised. There are many people who think that the Fed is done with raising interest rates. I think recession came at like 3.6%, core inflation was like 4.4%, and with the job losses that are to come, because, um, you're, you got so many things that are going on right now, but there's this huge focus on YouTube on real estate and cars. These channels literally, uh, there's a guy by the name of Lucky Lopez. He has an automotive channel growing like crazy. There's another guy by car questions answered growing like crazy. And virtually every guy that has a real estate YouTube channel that's talking about real estate prices crashing, real estate, they're, they're, these channels are exploding in views. And one of the reasons that I feel, because one of the things I do is I read the comments. I feel that a lot of people want the United States of America to go into a depression. Now, why do I say that? Because these people want housing prices to crash. I'm not talking about you know, house is like 400,000 and it goes down to 300. No, no, no. They want this house to go down to 200,000. I saw this comment on the car channel, a 20% discount, eh, but you know, maybe a 50% discount 
would get my attention. I was just sitting there like, these people want absolute hell and rain and torments and locusts and stuff. They want it really, really bad so they can get what they want. They want it really, really bad. And I was just sitting there like reading the comments and just looking at it. And these like, these car dealerships, they should go out of business. I'm not feeling sorry for them. And this kind of reminds me of the core customer. And it reminds me of the pure, unadulterated marketplace. The unadulterated marketplace doesn't care about you. Doesn't care about you as a business owner, doesn't care. All they know is when they come to your restaurant, they wanna be served quickly. They want the food to be good. When they come to your business, your store, they want to buy their products with little to moderate hassle. And this is the core customer. Your mama could have died that morning, but you better open up that store. So I'm just looking at the core customers, the core customers, and I'm just seeing some craziness. These people want, like I said, hell, locusts, they, they want everything to fall so that they can win. And that's one of the things I'm seeing. I, I'm just seeing some crazy stuff because like, one of the things I do is go ahead and read all the comments. Just go down and read the comments because the comments tell you where the people are, what they're thinking, what they're believing in. And one of the things that I consistently see is this hope wishing and praying for Armageddon to come. And financial Armageddon, because this is the thing you gotta understand. For prices to get as low as what people want them to be, we're gonna have to have a lot of bad things happen. I'm talking about a lot of bad things. Many, many bad things happen and um, it's, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy because let's say truck prices, like truck, some trucks are like $100,000 for a truck and they want the price to come down to 50,000 or they want the price to come down to 30,000. So if a truck was selling for 100,000, the price comes down to 35, you know how bad things would have to be. I mean, we're talking depression era. People are wanting another depression so they can get the prices that they want. But here's the thing that's gonna happen. Here's the thing. If things get that bad, it's going to impact a lot of these people who are hoping and wishing for prices to crash. This is who is gonna happen. Cause you know, like I said, uh, my ride with the Lyft driver, very pleasant fellow, very nice fellow. And person, he's been in trucking seven years. And one of the things, you know, I felt it was good to actually have a real life case scenario of someone who owns a trucking company. And you know, the guy was, pretty liberal, you know, ask him a question, gives me a direct answer. Like I said, really nice guy. And um, the fact that this is happening in this economy just shows you that we're dealing with a very real economy. We're dealing with some very real stuff as it goes into this next move of the economy and this next move of the economy, I think is going to be very, very bad for a lot of people who do not have the right skill sets. And this is one of the things that plagued me when I was living in that boarding house and having all those issues and stuff. I didn't have the right skill sets. And honestly, you know, one, one skill set I wish I had, I wish I knew how to build websites. I think that's a good skill set to have. And one of the things that's happening is there's so much technology that's coming out that's making it like, I, I could tell you, I got a green screen, it's not, I got a green screen. I could put my green screen behind me and show you any background that I wanted, which 
it's kind of I'm thinking about doing that. I don't know if I'm going to do it because um, one of the things that will happen is because I'm already set up with my software to do this green screen. It's just a few clicks of a mouse button, but I can put any background behind me. But, you know, one of the things that I've become really interested in is the number of people who are doing out and about walking videos. Um, there's this guy in real estate who does it. There's Edward PhD, I allegedly, Jeremiah Babe, um, and the Economic Ninja. They all do these outdoors walking in the physical realm videos and the videos do really, really well. So that's just something else I'm thinking about. Uh, I'm really, really thinking about. But yeah, this is the reality in the economy. So give me a little time to get it all set up, to set up the phone calls. There will not be a sales call. This would be me just talking to you to see where you are, what you're looking for, to get a real good feel of the exact training that you guys are looking for. So that's all I got for you right now. Once again, you can answer those questions and it's set up like, I might go ahead and set that up today where you can go ahead and start scheduling calls and get that set up so we can start um, talking to people and seeing what's on the minds of the folks. All right, that's all I got for you. I will see you guys in the next one.